everybody I've got a really nice project for you today it's where you're going to do a beaded focal on wire and then these are square noodle tube beads which we carry at beastsboutiques.com um, that you can wire along the sides and then just add a little bead section that's really quite lovely and it's very easy to wear and lightweight which is kind of nice too so let's get started with it I have this completed one here uh, to show you kind of what it's going to look like as you can see it's really pretty and you can use your choice of beads rondelles whatever the beads I've used here are mostly um, four millimeter and six and then eight okay so the a smaller side you know smaller side. so I'm going to start out and I'm going to make this part here which is on a piece of heavy gauge wire I've got 16 gauge wire here and I'm going to pull off just to be safe about nine inches. It's probably a little more than I need, but I'd rather have a little more than a little less. I have to start over, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I've got this nice wire, and I want to straighten it out like this. Straighten it out the best I can. Then I'm simply going to take it, and I'm going to bring it around and fold it until I have this nice loop here for my centerpiece. Now. When I do this, I don't bend it over itself, I leave it. And you might say, well, how's it going to stay like that? Well, you'll see. It stays pretty good, actually, see? In fact, I think I'll make that a little bit smaller. You'll see the way I do it. Um, you wrap it at the end when you do this part. Okay, so I've got about that side a little bit bigger. It really doesn't matter if it's a little bit bigger. I want to get this kink out of here. You don't want to have kinks because you want to put your, you know, your, your beads on. So now I'm going to start beading these parts. So now I've got some rondelles and some spectra beads. And just a little this and that. You know, this is kind of a good way that um, you can use up stray beads. I just hope that this fits uh, now see this is too thick for this so I'm gonna have to do something else about the rondelles I won't be able to use those but I have something else and this will work so it's all good in a pinch so I'm just gonna add some pretty things that I think will look good together and we will go from there okay so now I think I'll do one more spectra on this side you can see the loop in the middle is staying put quite nicely you know, it's not, not moving around much. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other side. And that would involve my doing another uh, spacer. I did a little coil bead on there. If you happen to have some, those are great too. Um, so, oops, don't go up there now. So try to get them fit down in. Probably because I didn't have the right rondelle, I'm going to want to probably go with a bead here rather than another. Yeah, so that it will kind of go. Don't worry about this pe this part here, right in here. Don't worry about it. We will take care of that later. We don't even have to worry about that. So here's another one of these. And, you know, I'm just beating this up, however, just for, you know, the sake of beating it so that I can show you, you know, how the project goes. So we don't have to really worry about any of that. Okay, so I've got... One, two, three big ones. One, two, one. One more big one. So what do I have here that will work? Well, I have another spectra. Can't get too many spectra beads. These are really wonderful because they're two-tone. I was so thrilled when I found two-tone ones. Okay, so that's pretty much the same. Let's measure and see how that's going to be. Because you, you do want to get them pretty even. And honestly, you could go up even a little bit more than I did on this. I'll probably clip a little of this off. Okay, so this is just about an inch and a half of beading on this side. And then we go from... Oh, I just lost one. <laughs> it just slid right off there. This could only happen to me. Okay. All right, so... That was an inch and a half, so now here, just to make sure that you know you're on the right track, you go right from the middle part right in here. Okay, that will be where your measurement will start. 
just and then all you're doing is just checking to be sure that you know there even looks like this is a little bit high on this end. So yeah, actually it's about an inch and a half too, even though it might not look quite like it is. It is. Okay, so now we've got this all pulled together and we're good. Um, I'm probably gonna bend this part. The, the loop part, I'm probably going to bend it back just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to loop the ends here, and I don't need this much, so I really wouldn't have needed I probably could have gotten away with seven and a half inches, maybe. So I'm going to just easily clip that off there. You stay in there. And I have maybe, I don't know, how much left? A half an inch. That's enough to make a nice loop. And I'm not wrapping these loops. Now, if you want to make them wrap, then you'll, you know, want to leave it a little bit longer. So now I'm just going to get my little wolfie pliers, and I'm going to turn this. And it might, you know what, this might still be too long. Yep, it's going to be still too long. So I'm going to nip a little bit more off. You know how you kind of have to just gauge these by eye sometimes, you know. So anyway, so now I'm going to turn it. Now the big trick on this is I want to get my other side to be pretty much exactly, you know, looped the same way as this. The same size and everything, you know, same same type of loop up. This is not a problem because I can just slide <laughs> it back up, see? You could wire that shut if you wanted to. It wouldn't hurt anything. I just, I didn't. But maybe I should have. It's all up to you. A lot of this is up to you. You know, I can show you basically it's an idea you know and then you go from there in fact even though I didn't wear this one together I just might wear that one together because I'm trying to get this done and not fill them fool around with it a lot so that I can get this done before you have to go do something else <laughs> <laughs> so anyway and this is going to be too long again too so let's just hope how much did I cut off here My hands are shaking a little bit today. Sorry, guys. Too much caffeine. Alrighty. So now I will take and I will just loop this. In the meantime, don't worry if the, if this slides down here. We'll catch that later. Just get it going the same way. So this is a little bit crooked. So I want to straighten it up a little bit. So it will be going just the same way as this one. Okay? And hopefully the same size. Because if not, I'll be taking it apart. Because this is, this is kind of critical, getting them the same as much as you can. This does look a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe not that much. I'll snip a little bit. Before it closes, I'll snip just a little bit more off. Hey. You have to be careful. I'll snip through the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I got Javi at my side. She's working with a nice new program that we've been using. But sometimes a the basement here is not the best. Okay, so it does look like this is high and long. Well, we can adjust for that. We we'll just pull it up, pull this up a little bit, and wire. And then it'll be the same size. So, how am I going to wire that? Well, I believe I believe I will just use the beading wire, which I'm using 28 gauge. I'm not going to start this bottom part yet. That's that's the part that takes the most time. I'm taking, I don't know, maybe a foot off the spool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put, I think I'll do it this way. I'm going to go in, and I like to leave a tail, and you'll find out later why. I'll just go in. And this just basically secures it, but we don't want a lot of wire showing in here. Okay, so I've just got one time around on there. If you can see, one time around with the 28 gauge wire. And I didn't have copper, so I'm using gold, which is an okay substitute. Now I'm just wrapping it around, and that's good. Now that's got that nice and secure, and that's all we need. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to kind of twist. Now this is how you close wire off, you know, make it secure. Um, I do this, if you've watched my caging videos, this comes... I learned how to do this when I was teaching myself how to do the Haskell type beading. And so you just twist it. So I looked at 
love the old pieces and this is how they did it. It was twisted. Now you don't want to twist it too hard because you don't know what will happen. It'll snap. And then all the good's gone from it. So that's that's pretty good. So I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to try to keep that as hidden as I can by tucking that down in. Now let me snip this off. I kind of wasted some. I was going to leave it stay. That's why I left it long. I was going to leave it stay for when I'm going to bar it. But now I'm going to just put a new piece on when I'm ready. Fortunately this wire is not very expensive. And I got that pretty flush. You want to get that as flush as you can because you don't want it sticking out and jagging you. That's the main thing. I think I'll just tamp it down a little bit with my pliers here. Okay, so now I've got that. Get this out of the way. Okay, so now um, I have to decide which side I want to be what. Do I like this way or do I like this way? And as you can see, this is very random and that's okay. Not a problem. Not a problem. I think this one rolled off of here. That's all right. I can make it work. Just bend this a little bit longer. It'll be okay. It's very subtle. Subtle. I think I want it this way. And then what I'll do is when I beat the bottom, I'll substitute for the fact that I think I'm missing this on the side. I think it came off before I could get it the ends caught. And I will put a little bead in there, but you'll have to see that later. There's so many ways to go when you random bead this, because this is all very random. You just go by your eye. Usually what I do is I go around one time, then another time, then a third time, and catch any holes or anything I have where, you know, it didn't bead through quite right. Um, so, you know, you just do it by eye. So I will do that by eye, too, when I get to it. Now, let's do... Just so leave it like that. And you know what? There's so many ways you could go with this. You could beat it like this if you want. Or you could just take and put, you know, hang stuff from this if you want. Or you could beat it and then do some little danglies that way too. You know, make loops from your wire here. I mean, there's a way, bunch of ways you could go. You could also flatten this and fill it with resin if you want. So, I mean, there's just it's a lot of possibilities here. Lots and lots of possibilities. Okay, so let me just move on from this. Okay, so as you can see, I did these square tubes up the side. I had a couple more made. I actually made these for uh, a memory wire bracelet that I had in mind want to make, and then I found out they were too long, and they threw the memory wire off because the curve wasn't arced quite enough. And so it didn't really work for that. But as you can see, they're going to work fine for this. I'd like to see those. See, this one's got these these two. They have nice, um, even spacing on them. This one's got a little bit too much. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's put this aside, because we're not working on that now. And I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's see if I can remember. <laughs> no, I can remember. So I'm just going to take and pull a few beads off of here. I'm just going to let them sit inside this necklace because that way they won't roll. Oh, man. They won't roll around. Okay. Too much. <laughs> They'll stay available. Let's put it that way. Now, I need another piece of this 28 gauge. And I usually am pretty generous in what I pull off. This is going to be, let's see, just to give you an idea in case you like more measuring. I would say it's going to be about 14 inches. So I went a little bit past the rule. Okay. And we can always cut it off if it's too much. So I would probably rather have too much than not enough. And what I do with these, I don't start at the end because if you start at the end, it will just slip off. And it will be so frustrating you won't believe it. So what I do is I take it and I go start in the middle and I kind of get this about half so I have it for both sides and just wrap, wrap, wrap. Get that going. Wrap, wrap. Get that going. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding beads. So here we go. Are you ready? Here's one. Now, what I want to do is I want to keep this bead on top of the square, okay? So if you use a different kind of noodle tube, whatever, that's fine. But I'm going to keep it on top. Now, it wants to go down, so 
um, you can just push it up. You know what? I think I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. There's a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to put them all on first. They look like they're all individually wrapped, but not necessarily so it's the way I secured them. So I'm going to put a bunch on first. You can always switch directions, you know. So now I ripped it and wrapped it in the middle. I'm not wrapping single beads. I will wrap it on the way back. And you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Okay. I can start with this much, I think. Well, I'll just put another one on. You want to be able to go all the way out to the end of it. As I did, you can see here. You know, of course, I was doing that on a nice, quiet Sunday afternoon with nobody around, so it went, you know, like great. <laughs> and now you're watching me, so not so much. Okay, I can get rid of that one. Okay, so what am I going to do? I got this hanging free. Well, I'm going to. I want this to rest on the top of this square. Um, new to. So I'm just going to come around. And if it slips at first, don't sweat it. You can move it back in place. If you can, try to, you know, keep the holes facing each other so they're not, you know, hanging out and showing. So I go around twice. Now I go around twice. I go around twice. See how easy that is? Go around twice. And here I am back in the middle. And that's done. That came out good. So now... I need to do my other side. What am I going to do with this? Well, for now, I'm going to leave it loose. Because I think maybe I'll have enough to complete it, and then I can come back with that. So let's just um, thread our beads on. How many did I use? I used five. Okay, so I'm going to put five more beads on here. This is actually probably the easiest way instead of trying to go one at a time. Once you would get a couple three on there, oh, it's so hard to find these little tiny holes. Once you would get a couple three on there, though, um, it would go much easier. But I think this is just probably super simpler. Super simpler, does that make sense? The biggest problem is finding these little holes on these round beads. I never was one to like tiny, tiny beading, unless I'm doing random stuff like this. This is the way my brain works. I don't think I could ever do the bead patterns or anything like that. But you never know where the road will take me. You never know. Maybe I'll get a little bit more discipline about myself and learn to do some of that. Because those shape beads do intrigue me, I have to say. They do intrigue me. Okay. So, now, I, I'm going to need a couple more because where I'm coming up on this. See? Yeah, I'm going to need a couple more on this side. So I may have to use my other side to do this. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. The first one always goes the easiest, I think, the first side. And it probably would have been better if I had put like two-thirds of the wire to use on the other side and left the one-third hanging for the tail and then come back to use it for the finish. That probably would have worked better. But, you know, it just shows you there's more than one way that you can do it. Okay, so now I'm going to put that up. Of course, I want to cover over this because, you know, I want it to be continuous. So now I'm going to come around that. I got this one. got twice on that. Let's see how far we get. Twice on that. And I think that's about it because I have to have something to tie off with. So now, what am I going to do? Well, I'll take my other tail and I'll just twice around with that, twice around with that. See? Slip. Once you get going on it, get a beat get a beat going and it ended up just about perfect for length woohoo all right because you don't you don't need to have a long tail at the end see now this doesn't want to go down all the way there we go pull it all the way down to the bottom don't leave it up to the top if you if you can manage it be best that way okay so now I got this one, I came back over that way. Now I got to twist it off. So now how I'm gonna do that? Well, I got two tails here. I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna start twisting. Very gently because this wire will break super easy. It breaks super, super, super easy. And you don't want that, of course. The trick will be with this, since this isn't dense with beads, 
to find a way to hide this tail. That's what the trick's going to be on this one. Leave that there. So now the way you do that is you're going to bring it around in a coil. In fact, I probably wouldn't even need this much. I could probably take a little bit more off because it's pretty well wrapped. Okay, so now I'm going to take it and I'm just going to kind of loop it and try to hide it the best I can. And then this piece will be the underside, if at all possible. But, you know, you still got to be sure that you have it so it won't jag somebody. I see a good way to solve this. Let me get right in here. Being careful I don't cut my beads off. Yeah, I just cut it to kind of, if you can see that, kind of float down under that bead. That was a good solution for that. You want to hide it the best you can and then tamp that down and push it in if you can so it doesn't be scratching something I'm gonna fill over that it's pretty good I'll come back and work on that later but I just wanted to show you basically the technique of doing this and if you don't get it spaced as nicely as you'd like you know you could take it off and do it again once you get the hang of it it's very quick in fact this is a good technique to use like for if you're wiring barrettes and hair ornaments, this is super good. Now, so how in the world did we make this turn and make it work out here? Well, real simple, you probably already can see, but what I did is I used a very long eye pin, and I'm just gonna take it, and it will just follow the curve of that. See how easy that went in there? And then all I have to do is turn and make another loop on this end. And then what I wanna do is I wanna be sure that my loop is going the same way as this one is. It just makes it come out better. And also so that it's about the same size. Now on this one, let's see what I did. I did, yeah, I did twist that one. So I didn't twist and loop that one, but you could just do it, you could just do this with uh, like a piece of freeform wire and twist, you know, and loop it and then turn it, you know, wrap it if you want. It's up to you. Do it or don't do it. It's your, it's your project. You can do how you want. So I'm just getting this, trying to get my loop even. I really admire that people are able to do this on camera. It just looks smooth as butter. Maybe one day I'll be one of them. Right now, though, I can do the project, which is good enough. And that's how you should look at it, too. You know, if you know, your first attempts are not, you know, really professional grade. Don't worry, you're, you're learning, okay? You're learning. Okay, so I snip this off. And I have to tamp that back in there the best I can so that it's not sticking up or being unsightly. Okay, that's nice and smooth. Okay, so this is really cool. This is all I need in order to finish my necklace on the side. So I'll just have to pick one of these and use it. So I'm not going to wire the other one through. So here I go. So I have, you know, two sides. You'll see that's really something. Really, really simple. Push it through. Okay, now again we want to be sure that it's going the same way. Because that's how things get off in beading. You probably know that. But when you don't get things going the same way, or you don't get them looped quite the same size, and they're just a little too random, then you, then you run into problems for fit on it. Okay. Come here. See, now see you want to twist. That's the thing. But I have hand cream on too, but my hands are so dry from all this hand washing. And they don't look so good, so I put a bunch of hand cream right on before we started, and that might not have been too good of an idea. I should have done it last night and put gloves on and sink in. Okay, so let me make sure that this is pushed down good and that it's going the same way. And we'll go ahead and we'll hook this guy up. Okay? Alrighty. So now here's what we're going to do is we're going to put it on here. See, that got twisted. After all that counsel, after all that telling you what to do. Okay, here we go. I want to do my loops the same way. Okay, this is good. Alrighty, so now I just need my 
um, jobs. And um, I am using more bright copper instead of an antique copper, and my findings and stuff that I have were antique. So um, we're just making do. Really, they're not a bad blend. Okay, so now I love my jumpy tool. If you don't have one, get one. We do have them at the site, but I don't care where you get it. Just get one because it's going to change your life, I think. Some people don't like them. Some people have just used two, two pair of you know, pliers for a long time, and they're very, very used to it, and they're just like, I'm good. You know, I don't need to do that. If that's the case, I'm happy for them. But I just got used to using it a long time ago. Now we have to be sure we get that nice and flush, and I did, as far as I can tell. Okay, so the last one, get the other side on. From here on out, it's pretty simple to actually finish the back part of the necklace. Where we run into some time is on the front part. And I'll kind of just give you an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish beading this one. And then next time we get together, I'm going to complete this necklace project by beading this part from scratch. Okay? All right. So I have that. And it's going to come out good. It's going to be all the same on the side. Everything's good. So now we just have to make our side pieces, and as you can see, I had two bicones and a spectra. Let's see if I brought the right kinds down here. And then I had these little guys. I love these little beads, except that they're just so fiddly to get the whole. But they add a lot. You know, I do those bead mixes at the website. I think I'm going to start doing some that are small beads and just, you know, smaller packets that are specially for doing, you know, this, this kind of stuff. Little blends. Or you might want to make your own blends. I don't know. Sometimes people have their own ideas and some people are stumped for them. Either way, it's all good. So long as you get some help if you need it. And that's why we're here. When I started doing supplies instead of just making jewelry for my living, um, I quickly realized that I would need to demonstrate and teach because a lot of people are just learning. They want to do what you're doing so bad, but they need you to help them a little bit. So, anyway, so okay, so now I got that on there. I'm going to just finish this off. I'm trying, I'm going to try to keep it going the same way. This one won't be as critical if it does or it doesn't. I should have started with these. Hope I'm in the camera. I get off too much. I kind of tend to work close to my body, and you know, if I do that here, then you won't be able to see what I'm doing, and that's not good. All right. So I got this done. Yeah, this would be kind of a two-parter. I'm going to show you a little bit about this one, and then the next time we get together, what we're going to do is we're going to beat it from the beginning. And by that time. You'll see all the ins and outs. You'll see all the mistakes I made. And you'll have ideas about how to do it better. And you know what I say about that? Good for you. Go do it better. I always want to see you do better. I know I'm competent at what I do. I love what I do. Um, but I know I'm not the smartest person either. Kind of smarter than me. Now where did I put that other one? Because I'm trying to... Okay, here we go. I need a bike on. I always look back at the one I did. Okay, what was my pattern? In case, you know, I know sometimes in magazines and stuff, it'll just tell you, okay, you put this here, you put that there. I just kind of not wired that way. <laughs> now, you know, it's, it's kind of a funny thing. A lot of people have learned how to do assemblage art from me, even though, you know, I kind of have a backwardsy way of doing it. And you know what? You might say, well, this is beading, Brenda Sue. That's not assemblage art. Oh, I beg to differ. This is assemblage art right here. This is just beading art. That's assemblage art. Hands down. Okay, let me get this finished. Stop yakking. Oops. Then I'll attach these, and then I'll show you how much chain to put at the back. And that's that. 
and then I'll quickly show you how that goes. Because if you look up close at this, you'll see, oh, that's a little bit kind of strange, Brenda. I see wire, and I see stuff broken up, and you will. You might have to make th two, three or four passes around that to get it all just how you want. Or you might have to even take a little bit apart. It's okay. Although I think maybe the more assemblage you've done in your life, you have a, a little bit better feel for it. I don't know. Okay, so now I'm going to put these on. But you can see, you know, if you have everything laid out and you kind of learned your technique, it's not going to take you a real, real long time to, to finish this, to it start to finish. I could have just broken this down more videos, just done the first part and say, oh, there you go. But it's like, well, that's very nice, Brenda, but I don't feel very encouraged by that because what am I supposed to do with that? Some of you have brilliant imaginations and will know, and others are like, well, I want to see the whole thing. And so I thought, well, let's do this much of it and show you how the neckline goes. And then we'll work on the middle another time, and that should be good. All right, this one goes here. All right. So I'm finding that, for me, I made this chain a little bit long. So I am, instead of, I went with four inches for each side. But then I found, it for me, it was a little bit too long. So I'm going to just go three and a half. But this is where it gets very individualized and you work it out for yourself. You know, how you want to, whether you're making this necklace for yourself or you make it for a gift and you want it to fit the other person or if you're making it to sell, then you would want to find a basic standard measurement that worked for most of your customers. And then you'd want to make it that side with an extender. I try to make almost all my necklaces with extenders. I'm gonna clip this little beaded part off. I love this chain. We've had this chain for a long, long time. And I try to carry it in all the colors. Okay, so is this three and a half? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Okay, go ahead and get the other side. Here, okay. I'll be sitting here patiently. You have to make your video shorter, I know. I just don't know how to do this whole project, but we'll split it up a little bit. Okay, so fine. So now I'm, all I need to do is hook this up, and if I want to put an extender on it, I'll just put an extender on it on the side where I hook into, and if you want to see um, a good video about extenders, we have one. Just go to the search box on the Bisu Boutiques channel and type in extender and that video will come up for you. People have liked that. In that video, we're just making extenders to use on like whatever necklace or even bracelet that you signed up. You see that flops over? It won't do that when you wear it, so don't worry about that. Not a problem. Okay. I'll just connect that. So now, now you can kind of really get a feel for how it's going to be when it's done. I didn't bring a clasp down, so I'm not going to put one on, but I think that's pretty basic. You guys know how to do that, so I'll do that by the next time we get together and have that put on. And then as you can see, on the end, I like to make a little beaded finial. So, um, I didn't bring a head pin down, so that's okay. You guys know how to do that too, I'm pretty sure, but I'll have that on until we get together again. Now, here's the deal with the metal part. This is all wired on. All these beads are wired on. Okay, so I have to get them lined up here. It takes a good many beads. I don't know how many. I must have used 30, 40 beads there. But, you know, little beads like this are not expensive, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to not work on this one now. We'll do this one from scratch next time in part two. This one, I'm going to kind of try to even this out because if you're looking at this with me, you'll see that there is way more on this side than this side. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of times when I do an oval shape like that, I will do that. You know, that's kind of my way. But there's a few loose things on here, and there's a place where there's a little bit too much wire showing. This needs to have something in here. It could have another bead or two in there. So just a few more things that I could put on there to make it a prettier design. So I'm going to pull off. Uh, about 
foot 14 inches whatever I think I need to get a new pair of cutters this one's seen better days okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see where I want to start with this and then I'm going to start there so here's the deal I'm going to pull this through about two-thirds of the way maybe okay and then I'm going to just oh come here you that's the thing when you have the longer piece of wire it's a little bit more clumsy but yeah I don't know a way to get out of it so anyway so now I've got it crossed there so it'll stay I'm working on it and basically all I do is I just go through my beads. The first row is wired down a little bit, kind of, sort of like um, I did my noodle tubes. Come on. It's kind of sometimes hard to get your first spot. But you just, it's kind of a little bit like sewing, maybe. You know? Anyway, sewing on beads with wire. So I found a hole there. So I'm pulling that through. And you want to watch when you're doing that, that you don't end up kinking your wire because you won't like that. Makes it hard. But yeah, this is a little fussy. This, this part is a little fussy. This part takes a little bit of time. But some people find it very relaxing. I'm, I'm one of them. I, I like doing this. But, you know, maybe it's for you, maybe it isn't. But you won't know until you try, right? What if I put a bigger one? I don't think that's going to fit. Sometimes I'll hold a bead up and see how is that gonna work? No, I don't think so. It's too too big. Too klutzy. But I think you get the, the gist of it. You just pretty much just, you know, loop the beads onto the wire. And then look for a place where it you know it needs a little it needs a little something more than it has. So I've got it going this way. And I have to be careful. I don't let it get it going out too far. Then I'll throw the whole thing off. So I'm going to go through here. Instead of just going directly across. So, because if I go directly across, I'll have a lot of wire showing. That's why I did that. You're going to have some wire showing with this anyway. You can go back, like, at the end of this, I'll go back and I'll see where I have the worst of it, and I'll try to poke it in places and make it not show. I pulled that up tight. Um, but it's basically, you know, you just, you have to work with it. I'll do a couple more beads and give you an idea, because you may have seen enough already that you kind of feel like you can handle this, which would be great. This is a little cotton bead I had left. Let's see how he looks in there. Little bead. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So I'll just take that and I'll go through here. And you just have to find a good place in between beads where you can take and, and pull the wire without kinking it or without um, letting it show too much. You don't want to do that. Okay. All right. I got that. I'm going to go around again. So it's basically just you, you just thread it on and start wrapping. And then you just go as far as you as you can. See, there's a little kink in there. That's going to give me trouble. Till you get it even. I'll just add beads to that till I get it nice and even, and not a lot of wire showing, and looking good. And that will be my design. So if you want to give it a try this week, um, that's pretty much what you do. You just put on your first layer. You go over the the first layer with a second layer to kind of build it up give it some dimension I, I think of it kind of like as bubbles it looks like bubbles to me kind of sort of and then you know then you go back the third time to fill in your holes and the fourth if you have to well, that's pretty much how that goes okay so I hope you enjoyed my project and my idea you can see how that wiring stuff on kind of works I did it on a freeform wire heart using some stray beads. I didn't, I didn't finish this one. This one's kind of looks like bubbles on the side, doesn't it? Something like this would have been good in the middle too, wouldn't it? With a heart and something, you could just hang one drop there. That would have been pretty. Just like I say, there's so many ways you can go with a design like this to make it your own. So anyway, until next time we get together, 
happy beading, happy wiring, happy jewelry making, and see what you can do with this. We do have the square noodle tube beads. We have most of the beads at the site. We have the Spectra two tones. We have the copper chain. So come over and check out what we have if you want a little bit of a new inspiration for your workshop. Get a few new things. So have a great day, and it was great to be with you today. Bye now. Thank you.